Aisha Makanga and her seven-year-old Hashim Bukenya are visiting Luero General Hospital for their fifth malaria treatment this year. Aisha walks her noticeably weak son Hashim to a hospital bed where a nurse prepares to take his blood. On Hashim's left hand, a cannula remains inserted from a previous procedure. His mother told us they have been staying at the hospital for the past five days for Hashim's treatment. Every time we come here, we are treating malaria. However, I have been told that this time round, he has developed swellings around his neck and in the nozzle area. Aisha is a farmer and tailor. She has lost five working days whilst providing care for her son. It is now harvesting time. I planted beans, but now I will find them rotting in the garden. While here, you can't even make sales of clothes. Despite the time spent at the hospital, Aisha often incurs significant expenses to purchase Hashim's medication when they are not available at the government hospital. I normally spend about 60,000 shillings to buy drugs whenever we don't find medicine here. Aisha and son, now discharged, must wait another half hour for Hashim's malaria test results. This test will confirm that he's free of malaria parasites, ensuring his treatment was successful and checking for any signs of the disease becoming resistant to drugs. Inside the lab, Enoch Muanga, the lab manager, and his colleagues are busy processing test results for patients eagerly waiting outside. Malaria, a frequent health issue here, keeps the lab team constantly busy. We have a lot of cases we do routinely, and among those many cases, we participate in diagnosing malaria. Uh, malaria, we use microscopy basically because it's the golden tool we have to use to diagnose malaria. Uh, on average, we get 160 daily test people, clients, to be tested malaria. And um, we have an average of 20% turning positive. Diagnosing malaria in Uganda's labs is a meticulous task. Each blood slide requires careful manual examination, often adjusted by hand around a hundred times to ensure an accurate diagnosis. Lab technicians like Enoch Muanga are overwhelmed, often handling more than the recommended 25 slides daily. But changes on the horizon. At Makerere University, Uganda's first artificial intelligence lab has developed a way to diagnose malaria using a smartphone. Rose Nakasi, a computer scientist and lecturer specializing in artificial intelligence, is at the forefront of this innovation. When you look at the gold standard mechanism, and that was our major uh, motivation for this study, is the use of uh, the microscopes. Uh, microscopes are the confirmatory tests for some of the cases, for example, ma malaria and uh, histology for uh, cancer. But uh, in our setting where the disease is actually high burden, you realize that there are few trained or skilled uh, microscopists and pathologists to be able to uh, support uh, the use of the gold standard mechanism, which is by the use of the microscope. So our proposition was, uh, since we have smartphones, especially even in areas like Uganda, where these diseases are highly endemic, we have uh, smartphones on the market. We also have uh, microscopes at most of the public health facilities, like the Healthy Center 4s and the Healthy Center 3s. So basing on the availability of such equipment, but also with the capability that is provided uh, by artificial intelligence, uh, could we be able to leverage on those uh, technologies to be able to support uh, the gold standard? So our work was to mainly come up with uh, an attachment of the smartphone onto the eyepiece of the microscope so that we can be able to capture uh, images and using artificial intelligence then we can be able to detect uh, these pathogens with a lot of ease.
The AI program adapts and improves by analyzing a series of preloaded images. It progressively learns to identify and recognize patterns and common characteristics of infections, enhancing its accuracy. The algorithms, all the artificial intelligence algorithms that we use, have the capability to learn on their on, on to learn the patterns out of the data sets that we give them. So they learn features to characterize the pathogens of malaria in the images that we capture. So once they have learned using a good number of these samples, then they are able to make predictions on any new test image to be able to infer a detection of those parasites. Nakasi explains that the algorithm accurately identified malaria parasites because the system has been extensively trained with thousands of examples and detailed characteristics of the parasites. We had to collect a good number of uh, training data sets or what I call training images so that we can be able to uh, train uh, the models. So far we've collected over 5,000 images uh, to train the model on and the more we increase the number of these training examples the better the model becomes at detection. The team has successfully piloted the model at Mulago National Referral Hospital. Uh, we've been uh, researching on this particular uh, aspect since 2016 up to date. This year they have received a 1.5 million US dollar grant from Google to support research and development efforts. We have seen different species, for example, malaria come, uh, presents itself with different species like the Fausparum, the Malari, the Overly. So we want to understand how malaria presents itself in the different regions in the country. Falciparum is the commonest species of malaria in Uganda. It is ranked as the deadliest of them all. In 2021, the World Health Organization reported that there were an estimated 13 million malaria cases and over 19,600 estimated deaths in the country. Nakasi says the objective is not to replace lab technicians, but rather to simplify their work, making their tasks more efficient and less time-consuming with the help of technology. I usually call it a support, uh, a decision support mechanism. We have so many patients, especially for malaria in the country, and I think you realize that the burden is actually increasing. Uh, but also, you realize that the microscopy as a mechanism itself is eye straining because these microscopists have to strain their eye to look out for those small pathogens. And where it gets to a case before a microscopist actually confirms that you don't have malaria, that means they have undergone like a hundred fields of view. So you imagine the time they are going to take until they confirm that a patient doesn't have malaria. So, so how does this technology fit into the picture? It comes in at the examination stage where we are attaching the, mic the smartphone onto the eyepiece of the microscope. So a microscopist at the comfort of his chair will just be able to capture the image onto the smartphone. And once uh, the, model is already, the model is already trained and is on the smartphone, then that means that the model can be able to scan the image and be able to count the parasites and then infer a diagnosis. Both a detection of the parasites but as well as uh, the quantification of the magnitude of the disease. So that makes it a lot easier for them. As Nakasi and her team prepare for a countrywide rollout, she emphasizes the importance of training lab technicians and equipping remote health centers. Infrastructure in some of the remote healthy facilities that has not been, uh, we, we don't uh, have a reliable internet connectivity. But good enough, again, through our innovations, we are now trying to come up with uh, both uh, internet-based applications, but also uh, offline applications to counter some of those challenges. But the thing is, if we... The Malaria Advisory Committee at the Ministry of Health has been working with several innovators like Nakasi, supporting them in enhancing their models to offer localized solutions for malaria diagnosis and treatment. We have interactions with the other technical groups like the uh, Vaccine Advisory Committee, the Uganda National Council of Science and Technology, which approves ethical uh, studies. We also have uh, institutional review boards, which review what innovations are being brought on and see whether they can implement. So 
when we hear of Makere University and the artificial intelligence group coming up with malaria diagnostic tools, working with the Ministry of uh, Technology and Science and also the other arms of government, we are able to take up all these innovations. And we do have a structured way in which we work and take up evidence and uh, information generated which can help service delivery. We the Uganda Virus Research Institute has spent years studying mosquito behavior. The executive director, Professor Pontiano Kalebu, notes the potential of this tool, especially given the unreliability of some rapid diagnostic malaria test kits. Because some of the rapid tests are specific for uh, uh, plasmodium, uh, fasparum, which may not detect uh, plasmodium malaria or ovare. I know fasparum is the most common. Uh, and some of the rapid diagnostics may be for that. But even within these uh, parasites, we are beginning to get some mutations. The potential of artificial intelligence in addressing disease outbreaks in Uganda and globally is promising. The technology could significantly contribute to various aspects of healthcare and epidemic management, including early detection, diagnostics and screening, and public health surveillance, among others. Walter Mwesije, NTV. You have to look out for those small parasites.